Russian shelling of the southern Ukrainian city of Kherson has killed 15 civilians, officials have said, as engineers across the country are trying to restore heat, water, and power to major cities. Throughout the country, Russian airstrikes in recent weeks have brought Ukraine's energy infrastructure to its knees as winter approaches and temperatures near freezing, spurring fears of a health crisis and a further exodus. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said more than 6 million households in the country were still affected by power cuts, two days after targeted Russian strikes on Ukraine's energy infrastructure. The country's national energy company, Ukrenergo, said late last night that the grid was still facing a 30% deficit, with its technicians working around the clock to restore power. However, it said it expected to increase coverage over the weekend, boosted by additional nuclear power. The attack on Kherson, a key southeastern city recently recaptured by Ukrainian forces, marked the deadliest Russian bombardment in recent days. A total of 15 residents were killed and 35 injured, including one child, as a result of enemy shelling, city official Galina Lagova said. Several private houses and high-rise buildings had been damaged, she added. The Russian invaders opened fire on a residential area with multiple rocket launchers. A large building caught fire, said Yaroslav Yanishovich, head of the Kherson military administration. Early yesterday, the region's governor said patients in the city hospital and others from a psychiatric unit had been evacuated because of constant Russian shelling. The Kherson City Council said it was offering to evacuate civilians to other regions. The attacks on power stations and other infrastructure resources throughout Ukraine are Russia's latest attempt to force Ukrainian capitulation after Moscow's forces failed to topple the government and capture Kyiv in the war's early stages. In the capital, where about half of residents were still without power two days after Russian strikes hammered the country's energy grid, engineers worked to restore services. We have to endure this winter, a winter that everyone will remember, Mr. Zelensky said on social media, as UK Foreign Secretary James cleverly visited to announce a new aid package. Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Schmeigel told a government meeting that almost all of Ukraine's critical infrastructure has been reconnected. Critical infrastructure includes water utilities, heat generation plants, hospitals and emergency services. But Mr. Schmeigel said ordinary consumers continue to face scheduled power cuts across every region of the country. Ukraine's Western allies have denounced the Russian attacks on energy infrastructure as a war crime. The strikes have come in the wake of a string of military setbacks for Russia on the front lines. Moscow insists it is targeting only military-linked infrastructure and has blamed Kyiv for the blackouts, saying Ukraine can end the suffering by agreeing to Russian demands. Meanwhile, for the first time since he launched the war in February, Russian President Vladimir Putin met the mothers of soldiers fighting in Ukraine, assuring those whose children had been killed that he and Russia's elite share this pain. I want you to know I, personally, and the entire leadership of the country share this pain, he told them. He said that many reports about the conflict could not be trusted, describing them as fake news, deceit and lies. Russia has introduced legislation that effectively bans public criticism of the war. Kremlin critics accuse authorities of concealing the real number of dead and wounded Russian troops. Anger and concern have built across Russia since the Kremlin announced in September that hundreds of thousands of well-trained and well-equipped conscripts would be sent to the battlefield to bolster Moscow's struggling campaign. But chaos ensued, with widespread reports of exempted men, including the elderly and infirm, being dispatched to the front and conscripts dying after receiving nearly no training, forcing the Kremlin to concede mistakes. Mr. Putin's meeting with the soldiers' mothers is a sign the Kremlin takes the growing malaise seriously. Visiting Kyiv yesterday, Britain's foreign minister announced new aid for Ukraine, including ambulances and support for victims of sexual violence by Russian soldiers. Russia is continuing to try and break Ukrainian resolve through its brutal attacks on civilians, hospitals and energy infrastructure, Mr. Cleverly said. Russia will fail, he said, 
vowing UK support will continue for as long as it takes. Meanwhile, the head of Russian mercenary outfit Wagner, Yevgeny Prigazin, said that a former US Marine general and several British and Finnish fighters were operating with the group in Ukraine. Finns are fighting in a British battalion as part of Wagner PMC, which is commanded by a U.S. citizen, a former general of the Marine Corps, Mr. Prigazin's press service said he told Finnish newspaper Helsing in Sanomat. Meanwhile, the head of Ukraine's presidential administration has said that Russia will pay for a Soviet-era famine that left millions of Ukrainians dead during the winter of 1932-33 and for its actions in the current war. The Russians will pay for all of the victims of the Holodomor and answer for today's crimes, Andrei Yermak wrote on Telegram, using the Ukrainian name for the disaster. Ukraine's annual Memorial Day for the victims of Holodomor takes place today. In November 1932, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin dispatched police to seize all grain and livestock from newly collectivized Ukrainian farms, including the seed needed to plant the next crop. Millions of Ukrainian peasants starved to death in the following months from what Yale University historian Timothy Snyder calls clearly premeditated mass murder.